I'm Dr. Harper. This video is a homework Excel tutorial video on linear programming operations management part E. So let's bring up the problem. An international distribution company of containers with corporate offices in Manila has been expanding operations that service customers between the Asian continent and the North American continent over the past four years. Leanne Abel, VP of Logistics, has called a planning meeting to discuss possible modifications to shipping schedules because of recent changes in operations. The initial motivation for the meeting is increases in the unit shipping cost due to a series of monetary adjustments with different countries. The unit cost of shipping from each source warehouse to each destination site, the capacity in thousands of warehouses, of the warehouses, and the demand in thousands of the destination sites are given in the table. Uh, before the meeting, Leanne sends the information to you and asks you to bring an optimal shipping plan to the meeting and be ready to respond to inquiries during the meeting. What is the minimum cost of the optimal shipping plan you bring to the meeting? So let's solve this thing. Uh, let's open this up here. Come to here. Control C and let's open up Excel. Come down and post it. And so there's the problem. And let's uh, full screen, enlarge it, and so now let's work it. Okay, just take away the framing. There we go. Okay, uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, take let's take these right here and see if we can uh, format these down. Okay, let's format these bigger. There we go. And then we can format these. Okay. Now let's um, let's take these to solve this. Uh, control C and come down to here and say Control V. And um, uh, we definitely want just the values. And we'll take this out. Here we go. So now we're going to box this in because this is going uh, this uh, uh, matrix here, and let's shade it. That's our decision variables, and over here, uh, this is going to is going to uh, what's be received. Just the opposite. This is what is sent, <laughs> and uh, then we copy this down. And these do not have to be dollars. We want these to be numerical. There we go. And then this is going to be uh, what is received. Ah, there we go. That's better. This is what's received in Tokyo. Shanghai and Hong Kong. Okay, and then here is going to be the sum product of the unit costs here times uh, the number of items that are going to be shipped. Uh, and this represents the shipping cost, so I'll box it and shade it. So this is what this is the cost we want to minimize, and here are the numbers we're changing. So let's go to data under solver. And that cell right there is an objective function. We want to minimize it by changing these variables here. Uh, add our constraints here. Uh, what is sent must be less than or equal to the capacity. Add uh, what is received uh, by these. And we will say that it's greater than or equal to the demand. And there it is. OK. Uh, Non-negativity, make this a simplex algorithm because it's a linear uh, program, simplex LP. Solve, and we see here that we have uh, solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. We keep the solver solution. E okay. Uh, so we see here that it's 59, 51,000, what was it again? 51,930. We bring this over, and sure enough, it's 51,930. And so that's the first one. Question two. During the meeting, 
A subcommittee assigned to review any changes in the warehouse's capacity reported that Vancouver just increased its capacity by 10%, but added, that should not be a problem since we will have more capacity than before, so our shipping plan and shipping cost should not be affected. Leanne counters, not necessarily. Increased capacity could change shipping schedules, which may lower costs, but we need to make sure. And actually, Leanne is correct. When you have more capacity, you have more freedom to ship it different ways, and often you can find, you quite often, you can find a cheaper way of doing it when you have more, more options. Leanne turned to you and asked you to determine if there will be a decrease in total cost when the demand for Vancouver is increased by 10%. What is a decrease in total cost of the optimal shipping plan after the 10% increase in Vancouver, Vancouver's uh, capacity? Now I say demand for Vancouver, it's really Vancouver's capacity. So Vancouver sees it as demand, it's Vancouver's capacity. Okay, so let's bring back Excel. And so we know that we're going to increase this capacity by 10%, 770. Uh, and so currently, we know that the current cost, and let's uh, copy this and paste it right here, the values, that's what it is now. But now when it's 770, we go to data, solver, and the same problem, just solve it again, and it's OK. And this time, uh, the increased capacity is going to be 51720 dollars. OK? And the difference equals 930 minus 720 is 210. And we see here that the decrease is 210. Question three. Toward the end of the meeting, Leanne addressed the group. Recently, I was asked by Tokyo if they could receive all their shipments from Vancouver. About the same time, Shanghai asked if all their shipments could come from Los Angeles. Initially, I indicated that it would be too difficult for us to accommodate these types of special requests, thinking that it would be too costly. But now, since Vancouver has increased its capacity by 10%, the increase in cost may not be that great. Leanne then turned to you and asked, compare with our optimal shipping plan based on the 10% increase in Vancouver's capacity, what would be the minimum increase in cost of the shipping plan that satisfy the demands for Tokyo and Shanghai and Hong Kong that accommodates the request of both Tokyo and Shanghai. Okay, so let's bring this back. Now remember, let's say, uh, let's bring this down here. Uh, Tokyo is from Vancouver. Shanghai is from Los Angeles. So let's bring this down here, paste this, and Tokyo is from Vancouver. Okay, and here Shanghai is from Los Angeles. We'll take these just so we don't get lost. Bring Excel back and let's put this down here. And there they are. So now, when we come back to Solver and say, okay, Solver, uh, let's add a constraint. And the constraint is Tokyo, the Tokyo here, click, that is going to equal Vancouver. Okay, so Tokyo, whoops, take that back. Uh, Tokyo uh, from Vancouver, that's going to equal the total uh, demand from Tokyo. So all of Tokyo is going there. And then we'll add. And then everything from Shanghai from Los Angeles here, that's going to equal all of the demand from Shanghai, 420. Okay? And then we just solve. Found a solution. And there we can see 
that 454.20, that's exactly what we wanted. And so it's going to have the minimum cost here, which is going to be uh, the 52, which is going to be a 52040. And the difference here is going to be 52040 minus 51720 of the cap, which is 320. And that's pretty much what we found, 320. So this is what all I have for part E of the homework Excel tutorial. I hope this helps. And so before the next time I see you, everyone, take care.